Hello and welcome everyone to the seventh session of the DuraCloud Brown Bag series. As you probably are familiar with, my name is Carissa Smith and I am the Partner Specialist, primarily working on the DuraCloud project, which is both a managed service and an open source technology offered by the DuraSpace organization. To find out more about either DuraCloud or DuraSpace, I encourage you to visit their respective websites at duracloud.org and duraspace.org. Please note that your audio for today's call is disabled, as you probably had already observed, but I highly encourage participation through the chat feature, which should be located on the bottom right of your screen. I have a few slides that I'm going to go over today. If you have any questions that come up as I'm going over the slides, feel free to insert them in the chat, and I will cover them um, during the Q&A session at the end. Um, or, of course, feel free to hold your questions until the end, and I will be sure to cover all of them that have come in through the chat. Uh, and I always reserve enough time at the end to get to everybody's questions, so uh, don't be shy. Feel free to use that chat, chat feature with as many questions as you'd like. Um, happy Halloween to everyone who has festivities planned for this evening. Uh, with that, I'd like to get the brown bag session started today. Uh, as my numerous uh, emails have, have uh, illustrated, today I'll be talking about the ways in which DuraCloud uh, differs from Amazon. And again, I have a couple slides presented that um, I'll probably talk to more so than anything. Um, one note before I do get started, I, um, I can uh, go into a live demo of DuraCloud if that's of interest. So as I'm talking about the ways DuraCloud differs from Amazon, feel free. Um, if you'd like to see, see the service or the feature in action, uh, just uh, send that in the chat and I can certainly at the end log into a, a DuraCloud account to show you, uh, show you uh, what it, will, what it looks like in action. So one of the, the first differences that comes to mind when you're talking about uh, DuraCloud and comparing it to Amazon is the fact that DuraCloud provides ongoing bit integrity or content health checks. So first I want to take a step back and explain how Amazon handles uh, content health and content health checking and then I will delve into the details of how DuraCloud uh, goes, the extra, goes the extra mile. So if you use Amazon right out of the box, uh, when you first add your content into the Amazon Cloud Storage area, Amazon S3, um, Amazon will calculate an MD5 checksum and store your content. Um, depending on the type of storage you've chosen with Amazon, they, they guarantee they'll store uh, multiple copies of your content, depending on, again, which, which uh, storage you choose. It depends on how many copies they, they say they store. And then Amazon uh, will recalculate that MD5 checksum value when you uh, download or retrieve that content item from Amazon. Um, if, if for some reason Amazon detects there's been an integrity issue, it will then retrieve another copy of your content it has stored off in its various server farms. So that's really uh, how Amazon checks content. And again, DuraCloud takes it that extra, that extra step or three, actually, to ensure the health of your content. So uh, when you first add content into the DuraCloud interface, our service will automatically check the MD5 value. It will calculate the MD5 value. It will then compare that MD5 value to what Amazon is calculating to ensure that uh, both are in sync. Um, in an ongoing fashion, DuraCloud will check the health of your content, meaning that a month after you've uh, first added your content to DuraCloud, we have an integrity checking service that will run. It will stream that content out of Amazon and recalculate that checksum value, that MD5 checksum value, and compare it to the original stored MD5 value. Um, and again, it just does that comparison to ensure that your content, as it's been stored in the cloud, has not uh, experienced any bit loss, bit loss or bit rot uh, as it's been stored in Amazon. Um, and this is also true uh, of DuraCloud uh, for the other storage providers that were integrated with as well, not just Amazon uh, content. Um, DuraCloud is integrated also with uh, Rackspace Cloud Files as well as the San Diego Supercomputer Center Cloud Storage. Um, and DuraCloud provides integrity checking on top of all uh, of the content at those stored at those cloud providers, um, which again is an additional, which is an additional feature of the DuraCloud service itself. So again, that's really the, the main difference between Amazon and DuraCloud in terms of uh, integrity checking. Amazon will check it when you ingest it and check it on uh, download, but DuraCloud uh, does an ongoing uh, health check of your content. And again, those are the MD5 checksums that we're, we're checking for the, the more tech, technical folks in today's crowd. Difference number two on the docket. Um, as I mentioned, 
DuraCloud is integrated not only with Amazon uh, Cloud Storage, but also with Rackspace Cloud Files and with the San Diego Supercomputer Cloud Store, which is our first academic, uh, non-commercial cloud storage provider we have available. And because of that, uh, you can very easily store your content uh, amongst one or all three of those cloud storage providers. You can have three replica copies. You could have all of your content stored in Amazon and a subset stored in another store. Um, if you decide uh, when you first sign up for DuraCloud that you'd like to just store your content in Amazon, but a year later you realize you'd really prefer to just have it stored in SDSC, for instance, uh, San Diego Supercompu uh, Super Computer Cloud Storage, that's SDSC, uh, the acronym, um, you can very easily move your content or a, a copy of your content to SDSC at any time. Um, and again, that is, that is a capability and a feature that obviously is not available with Amazon. Uh, as soon as you, you sign on the dotted line with Amazon Storage, you're essentially vendor locked in. I mean, certainly you can take your content out of Amazon, but um, there is certainly the time that you've invested to get your content into Amazon, and then you'd have to uh, retrieve your content back out of Amazon and move it into a whole entirely different technical infrastructure if you chose uh, another cloud vendor. And with DuraCloud, um, really one of our goals was to avoid uh, that vendor lock-in scenario, especially for the university community. Um, we realized that that was a real, a real need and a, and a real uh, gap in the current uh, cloud offerings. So again, the DuraCloud interface, as well as just the technical underpinnings, allow you to very easily move your content um, into Amazon to begin with, and then uh, move it, replicate it, synchronize it amongst uh, a couple other cloud uh, vendors all through the DuraCloud web interface. Again, it's very straightforward and very, uh, very easy to use. It's essentially as easy as clicking a button to copy content from Amazon to uh, the SDSC storage area, for instance. Um, and uh, again, you can avoid, easily avoid vendor lock-in in that scenario, as well as you know, geographically distribute your content uh, with, Am with Amazon and then SDSC as well. So it's a little more finer details and features about uh, of this big difference between DuraCloud and Amazon. If there are no questions, I'll keep moving along. Um, difference number three between DuraCloud and Amazon in particular. Um, I'll note that there are many ways to add content uh, with or to DuraCloud uh, or through DuraCloud. Um, and Amazon right now only provides really two ways that you can add uh, content to the Amazon Cloud Storage area. And both of these ways are at very opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, Amazon does provide a web interface or a web console that you can add content through uh, to the Amazon Cloud Storage area. And this is really good for folks who don't have a lot of technical, uh, um, technical staff, development staff, or time and resources at their, at their institution. Uh, the web interface does allow you to easily upload content, um, but it's not not very useful when you have you know 500 gigabytes, one terabyte and above uh, to upload content through the Amazon web interface. It's a little uh, more of an onerous and burdensome task at that point. And then Amazon on the other end of the spectrum has their REST APIs, which are fantastic, but would require a developer to program uh, a piece of software to integrate and move your content from your local environment or applications to uh, the Amazon uh, cloud area. So uh, DuraCloud has a couple additional tools and services built in to, uh, I think, make it much easier to use the cloud and, and move your content into the cloud. So DuraCloud, as I mentioned, does have a web interface where you can very easily add content, again, through a, a web browser. You simply point and click to your local files either on your local machine or on a local server, and these can be multiple files, multiple folders, etc., to upload to your content to DuraCloud. Um, and we also have DuraCloud REST APIs, as Amazon does. So if you have, you do have development staff on hand and you have a particular integration in mind with your uh, local application, for instance, you can certainly uh, do that with, with DuraCloud as well to move content from uh, your own homegrown applications in, into DuraCloud via the REST APIs. But we also have some tooling in the middle of the spectrum for folks who don't have a lot of technical staff but have uh, you know, one terabyte of content that they'd like to quickly and easily push up into DuraCloud and into the cloud. And uh, these one tool in particular is called the Synchronization Utility. That is just a standalone tool that you run on your local machine or local networked server. 
that allows you essentially to just bulk upload content to DuraCloud uh, in the background on your machine. So it's something that you don't really even need to babysit. You pretty much um, insert a couple configura configuration options into the synchronization utility, essentially telling it where your content is locally and where your DuraCloud account is and what your username and password is. And then essentially you push go and the synchronization utility will just bulk upload that content from your local machine uh, into DuraCloud itself. Um, the synchronization utility, uh, based on feedback that we've gotten from folks, can be run in one of two ways. It can be run as a, a bulk upload, so essentially you configure the tool to point at a local file directory structure of content, and it just pushes all that content up and then will stop as soon as, um, as, soon as it's, it's noticed that all the content has been loaded. Or the, the second uh, mode that you can run the synchronization utility in is, uh, is in a true synchronization fashion, meaning that it continues to run in the background on your machine, watching for any changes to your local content, either content additions or content changes, that it will then upload to DuraCloud on your behalf. Um, and in this case, it really allows you to keep, uh, keep or create an ongoing synchronized backup of your content in the cloud. And for some folks, having that you know day-to-day -day basis uh, backup in the cloud is is uh, the use case that they have in mind. Other folks just want a uh, a one-time backup of all of their content. But uh, this tool is flexible enough to be able to do that, and is something that Amazon does not currently provide. Um, I think that's the that's the takeaway from the slide is that we have additional tooling available um, that Amazon does not. Uh, one other note on this, uh, the corollary of the synchronization utility called the retrieval utility, which is again a DuraCloud a DuraCloud tool, allows you to bulk download content from DuraCloud as well. And it runs very similar to the synchronization utility just in the opposite direction. You point it at your DuraCloud account and tell it what content you'd like to retrieve back to your local environment. So if you have disaster recovery or a system restore scenario, um, we have tooling that will help pull your content back down. Uh, for those use cases. So yeah, I have a couple questions coming in uh, through the chat, and I think um, I might answer this one, which is usually not the case, but it makes sense to do it in line with these uh, so we keep on the same track. Uh, Paul asks, what platforms does the utility support? Um, so the synchronization utility is just a Java file, so it'll run on any, uh, any, um, on any platform, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, uh, any type of server environment you have. Uh, it, there's no there's no, I don't think, any other uh, requirements other than you have Java installed on uh, whatever system you're trying to use the utility on at this point. And then you also note that you'd like to see this utility in action. So if we have time, I can do a quick sync tool uh, demonstration for you, Paul. Moving on to slide number four. Um, another big difference, but a little bit less on the technical end of the spectrum and more on the administrative financial uh, workflow processes here. Um, DuraCloud offers an annual invoice and other flexible billing options that Amazon does not. So um, during the course of the two, uh, two DuraCloud pilots that were run, as well as getting feedback from all of our current customers and trial account users within DuraCloud, we heard from folks specifically in the university community that it was really hard to do the pay-as-you-go monthly credit card billing that um, that's what Amazon is known for. Um, that be based on the budgeting situation um, and other requirements in, in, in uh, particular departments and universities, that was just not an option. Cloud, cloud, cloud computing, especially with Amazon, just wasn't even a possibility just based on the requirements of, of billing and payment. So with that in mind, DuraCloud um, set up various subscription plans, which are all available at duracloud.org slash pricing, um, and they are all available through an annual invoice. Um, payment structure so that you sign up for storing a certain amount of content. Um, right now our lowest plan is uh, storing one terabyte of content in DuraCloud for one year and the cost for that is $1,500, $1,500. Um, and then we have various other plans available depending on, on your needs and how much content you'd like to store in DuraCloud, how many copies of that content you'd like to store, uh, etc. They're very flexible. But again, um, the, the service offerings, the subscription offerings, um, we really tried to tailor to the university community in particular, especially around um, creating the annual invoicing structure. Um, that's not to say that we can't do monthly pay-as-you-go um, charges via credit card. We can certainly 
uh, facilitate those as well if that works within your university. Uh, really, we're able able to and willing to negotiate um, you know, the billing options that are available with you and what would work best uh, at your university, which again is something that Amazon simply will not do. <laughs> you, you pay via credit card monthly or you don't use the service at all. Uh, moving along here, difference number five, um, and it's keeping in the same vein of DuraCloud being flexible. Um, again, we're also flexible in terms of the contract, uh, contract billing and other uh, technical details, not technical, administrative details um, when you're signing up for the service in particular. So as you probably are all familiar, uh, signing a contract with Amazon or any other big corporate entity is pretty much take it or leave it. They'll give you the contract and, and you don't really have any room to negotiate any of the terms whatsoever. So uh, if you can't sign on the dotted line, then you have to walk away from a service that could be potentially very helpful uh, for your organization. And again, one of the real strengths of DuraCloud, because it is a managed service of the DuraSpace organization, which is a small not-for-profit organization, whose mission is really to help university and cultural heritage communities um, preserve their their digital content um, and all of our all of our various services help to, uh, to do that in certain uh, different realms. Um, again, we really have tailored Dural Cloud to be flexible enough both in terms of the billing and the contract um, to fit into whatever requirements are um, are you know standard at your university. So in particular I should point out that Dural Cloud, uh, does have a service level agreement that you sign and again the, the terms of that are negotiable and you would be negotiating with a person, a real live person uh, that works for DuraSpace. When you sign up for DuraCloud regardless of what cloud storage providers you have determined you want to have your account integrated with you get one consolidated service agreement and one consolidated bill regardless of whether you have content stored at Amazon, Rackspace and SDSC. Um, you, you get one contract and one bill, um, and you never have to worry about going directly to any of those uh, commercial or, uh, in SDSC's case, academic um, organizations. You're working directly with the DuraSpace organization. We provide that, that buffer, essentially, for all of these other organizations. So we really hope to simplify and streamline uh, your use of the cloud um, you know, through our organization. And then I see I have a, um, a comment from Carol, a question, which I will get to at the end. Keep those questions coming, folks. If you have anything that comes up as I'm speaking, feel free to type it in the chat. Uh, difference number six here listed is that, um, as all of you may or may not be familiar with most commercial and, and corporate entities, their contract can change uh, without customer notification or approval whenever and when, whenever and wherever they would like. Um, and, and I certainly have experienced this uh, on a personal level with Amazon, um, but it's something that you don't have to worry about when you sign on uh, as a, a DuraCloud customer. When you sign the service level agreement with us, that is the, the service agreement that will, that will uh, remain for the course of your subscription. Um, certainly you can renegotiate at the end of the year if, uh, if something needs to be rene renegotiated from your end of the, of the spectrum, but um, we won't be sending you contract changes on a, on a monthly basis as, as Amazon typically does. Um, they're constantly updating all of their agreements online and they just sometimes may, may or may not email you the customer and say that they've made a, a change to their you know, user agreement uh, without you even knowing. So again, uh, another strength of DuraCloud uh, because it is offered by the this, uh, this small DuraSpace not-for-profit. Um, we're not going to change contract terms with you. We realize that uh, keeping a contract uh, in store for the, the entire subscription year is something that is uh, of the utmost importance, especially in the university community. Difference number seven, and I just have eight today, and then I can open up the floor for any, any and all questions. Um, and this is something that, get, that I get asked a lot is, why would I choose DuraCloud if I could just go straight to Amazon? Um, you know, pricing seems cheaper. Why, don't, why, why would I even think about uh, going with DuraCloud? And that's actually a misnomer. Um, DuraCloud has pricing parity with Amazon. Um, and not only that, <laughs> but DuraCloud offers all of these additional preservation services uh, in addition to what Amazon provides. And again, the pricing is, is essentially equal. Um, you can go to the, the DuraCloud.org pricing page, which I can put up the link here, 
uh, after today's session. And if you did, if you did the math out, uh, it would be pretty much on par with Amazon pricing. I think the difference is that Amazon lists their price lists their prices in per gigabyte per month, uh, which is always going to look smaller than an annual contract for $1,500 for a terabyte. Um, but we do pass through uh, the costs that we that we incur from Amazon as well as from Rackspace and SDSC. Um, and again, we're a small not for, not for profit. Our real goal is not to make uh, not to make um, scads and scads of profit. Essentially, it's uh, our goal is to make enough profit to keep DuraCloud running and to keep adding features and functionality that we hear directly from our customers are required. Um, and again, that's something that I didn't add, but I'll probably touch on on the next slide is our is our real mission with DuraCloud. So again, just touching uh, on the pricing parity with Amazon, it is essentially a, a pass through. Um, for us, the DuraCloud, uh, the DuraCloud service, um, in terms of both <clears throat> cloud storage and cloud compute, we're passing that right along uh, to you in our subscription plans. Um, let me just touch on a few more services um, that DuraCloud offers, uh, just just through the subscription plans themselves. So I mentioned the ongoing integrity checks uh, of your content that happen on a semi-regular basis. Those are all included in the subscription plans at no additional cost whatsoever. So not only do we check your content, we also report back in the user interface uh, the health of your content and the last time it was checked. Um, we, ha we run additional preservation services, such as the ability to create uh, copies of your content that you can then store in, as I mentioned, Rackspace or SDSC. Um, you can keep those copies synchronized. We have synchroniz cloud synchronization services. Uh, that keep all of your cloud copies uh, synchronized, as well as the local utilities that I mentioned, the synchro synchronization and retrieval utilities that allow you to push up your content and pull your content down. All of, the, all of those tools and features and functionality are included in the subscription price. There are no additional charges or service fees or you know, anything like that. Um, when you sign up to store a terabyte for $1,500, that's exactly what you'll get, and you'll get all of the additional tooling um, that I've mentioned in all of these great preservation services uh, at your disposal as well. And then the last, the last major difference that I wanted to point out today, and I've been hitting at, hinting at it a little bit uh, as I've been going through these slides, is that because DuraCloud is uh, a managed service from a very small not-for-profit, uh, when you need customer or technical support, you will be speaking with a live person me. <laughs> and we do pride ourselves on providing uh, superior support. We have a ticketing system, there is a phone number and a support email address, um, as well as my Skype address if you need it. Um, and, and really our goal is to get folks up and running and, and using DuraCloud. Um, when you do sign up to be a customer, um, I do provide training sessions free of charge, so there is free training available as well. Um, we don't really put a limit on the number of training sessions, so I would certainly uh, train you to begin with, and then I could do a couple other training sessions for various um, colleagues and coworkers that, uh, that are available, and we'll be using DuraCloud at your institution. Um, and again, I'm always available for support. Again, and I'm, I think, I'd like to think I'm pretty re easy to reach. I'm on my computer much more uh, off hours than, than, I, than I would like to be, but I am available. Um, and again, this is much different than the Amazon uh, experience. And I don't know if any of you have, have experienced Amazon support personally, but um, certainly you submit a ticket off into the system. A few days later, they'll, they'll get back to you, an automated response, and they don't even sign you know, an actual person's name. They tell you not to respond to that help support ticket. It's, you know, you just, you just submit your ticket off into the black hole and hope someone somewhere will, will get back to you um, at a call center or in an email center. Um, and certainly DuraCloud uh, does not have a call center whatsoever. Um, so we're here to provide uh, superior support to you folks. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that DuraCloud really relies on customer uh, feedback. So um, having a, an open communication channel with our customers is of the utmost importance because it's, it's your feedback about features and functionality that you'd like to see, what your local workflow is that allows us to create additional services and, and tools and functionality that will help you to continue to use DuraCloud to meet your needs at your, uh, at your university. And again, to, in my mind, that's a really big distinguishing factor um, of DuraCloud as well. Um, our service is constantly coming out with new features and functionality, and it's 
directly because of the feedback we've received from current customers. So if you'd like to sign on to a product where you could potentially have your have your voice heard in the development and the new features, um, I would highly recommend DuraCloud because really that's that's how it's how we work, it's how we operate. So with that, those were the eight main points I wanted to cover into today's session, and I see I'm doing almost perfect spot on with timing, meaning that we have about 15 or 20 minutes left um, for questions. And again, I'll open up the, the I'll open up in, in quotes the chat feature now for folks to jump in with as many questions either about what I've covered today during uh, the session or just about DuraCloud in general. If I mentioned something that uh, made you think of an, an additional question that isn't necessarily related to today's topic, feel free to hop in with uh, questions that you may have. Um, Carol uh, asked, what is the largest amount of content that clients are currently storing? So that's a, a good question, Carol. We're right about the right around the 10 terabyte mark for an individual customer. Um, though one of our customers has just signed on to store 15 terabytes of content within DuraCloud, and that's just one customer. We have a, multiple customers storing uh, above five terabytes, so we were probably getting close to the 50 terabyte mark uh, in total at this point, at, at least. Uh, I have not done that calculation lately, um, but yes, we're in the multiple terabyte range at this point with our current customers in terms of the content that they're storing. And then I see I got another question about, is the sync utility included in the DuraCloud preservation basic plan? Absolutely, Sarah. Um, all of the tooling uh, is included in all of the plans. Um, I can talk about the main differences between the subscription plans if you'd like. I think I did. I also have a, a past brown bag about that. But all of the ongoing integrity checking services, any of the synchronization services, the synch synchronization utility itself, the retrieval utility, um, there's an upload utility as well. All of those are included uh, with all of the subscription plans when you sign up for DuraCloud um, without any additional fees or anything like that. Other questions that I can answer for folks today. We still have a good 10 or 15 minutes for, for questions and answers, and I'm, I'm very happy to uh, answer or also to demo if, if you'd like to see what the DuraCloud interface looks like with Amazon and ST support. Uh, supported, uh, let me know and I can um, delve off into that as well. Um, while folks add questions to the chat, I'm going to just do a quick plug. Um, if anything I've said today has whetted your appetite for DuraCloud, um, keep in mind that we do offer free 60-day trial accounts of DuraCloud. So even if you're not quite sure if you're ready for DuraCloud at your institution or exactly how it could potentially fit in your workflow, um, feel free uh, to sign up for a trial account and, and test it out for 60 days to see to see uh, if you could make it fit at your institution. Um, I would highly encourage that. Just um, again, go to the duracloud.org website and click on the Try It button, and it will send an email to me, and I can get you up and started with a trial account. See, I have someone typing in the chat, so I will pause for a minute. Uh, Paul asks, "Are the connections secure, and is the content we store kept secure?" Good question. Very good question, Paul. Um, <clears throat> you are transferring content over HTTPS, um, so yes, the, co the connection is secure, and the content once you have it stored in DuraCloud is is uh, held secure by a couple a couple mechanisms. So first, the DuraCloud application itself is is secure with a with a login, a username and login. So there's there's only uh, you, the account owner, and any other users that you provision. And allow to log into your con into your account, uh, have the ability to see your content. Uh, number one, um, from a more technical standpoint, the DuraCloud application, the web application, is the only application that can actually gain access to the content that's stored at the various cloud provi providers themselves. So the DuraCloud application is the only application uh, that can log in and, and view the content that's stored uh, in the Amazon account that we set up on your behalf. There's no there's no backdooring in at all. Um, uh, in terms of the content itself though, we do not have any encryption, encryption utilities available yet. So um, that might be something that's of interest to you and I would be uh, curious to get your feedback. But at this point, encryption um, would have to be something if you, if you are very concerned about the content, uh, the content items themselves, you would have to encrypt locally before you transfer content into DuraCloud. 
Um, we could certainly store encrypted content. That's not an issue. We just don't have any tooling to support an on-the-fly encryption uh, at all at this point. But um, in terms of security, we do our, our uh, application as well as the connections that our application makes to the cloud storage providers uh, is all done through HTTPS with firewalls. Um, and again, as I mentioned, our, our DuraCloud application, the web application itself, is the only thing that is able to connect to uh, the integrated cloud storage provider accounts that we set up on your behalf. Any other questions from folks in the audience, whether it be about uh, how DuraCloud differs from Amazon, um, how the DuraCloud service itself works, anything about the subscription plans available, pricing, costing, service level agreements. Um, really, the sky's the limits at this point. If you have any additional questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them, any and all. And I will actually let me type in the chat too. I keep mentioning the pricing. Why is pricing only at the terabyte level? Uh, that's a that's a good question, um, Paul. During the course of our, our two pilots, as well as talking to the various customers that we have with DuraCloud at this point, um, estimating on an annual basis how many terabytes you use just seemed to make sense. Um, folks, for the most part, didn't have less than one terabyte to store. In the cloud, nor did it really make much much sense at that point, um, and so we just estimate on a yearly basis one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, etc., um, to store in the cloud, and that has seemed to work for folks, especially when they um, are signing up for an annual contract. Um, of course, and let me let me step back for a moment. If you sign up for three terabytes, and um, six months down the line of using DuraCloud you suddenly realize you need five terabytes of space, we can certainly uh, provision that. That's not a problem technically, and we would just send a prorated invoice um, for the rest the last six months of your subscription for that additional uh, couple terabytes. Um, so we're very flexible that way, too. If you decide to sign up for DuraCloud at the one terabyte level, and then you know six months down the line, you realize you need a couple more terabytes, we're more than flexible to send you a prorated, uh, prorated invoice for that additional storage. Hope that, I hope that answered uh, the question for you, Paul. But if you were uh, indicating something else, just let me know. Uh, any other questions from folks uh, in the participant window? I am, again, more than happy to answer anything um, about DuraCloud or the service itself, or even about uh, the DuraSpace not for profit organization, as I mentioned that a couple times today as well. And again, I see uh, some folks typing, so I will just wait patiently. And I will also advance the screen to the last on the list here. Um, so while folks are typing their last questions, I will note that the last Dirt Cloud Brown Bag session for this year will be on November 28th. Um, I have yet to decide what topic I'll be discussing, so if there are any suggestions for topics that you'd like to have covered, either about DuraCloud or the cloud in general, um, please let me know. And you can let me know by just sending me an email at csmith at duraspace.org. My email is right on the screen in front of you. Um, I got a great question from Tito. Uh, do you have plans to support DuraCloud integration with Amazon Glacier? The, uh, the short answer to that is yes, we absolutely do. Uh, we are just in the current beginning phases of really deciding what that integration is going to look like, what types of services and support we would provide. Um, so I don't have any further details on exactly what that would look like necessarily or when it would be available. Um, but I, I will say that, yes, we are planning to integrate with Amazon Glacier and offer a, a, a DuraCloud Glacier-like service in the future. Um, I just don't have any, any date on that. But we, do, we are working um, pretty quickly to try to get that out the door uh, sooner rather than later. But yes, um, that will certainly be on the docket and, and keep your uh, keep your eyes open for any news about that. Probably the beginning of this upcoming year, uh, I would suspect we'll have some, some news at that point. Uh, John has a question about whether our customers are using image and video streaming services of DuraCloud. Uh, another great question, folks. Keep them coming. And the answer to that is yes, uh, John. We do have a, one particular user using the uh, image image services, the state of North Carolina, and I can 
can see if I can find that link. They are serving um, index card images uh, from DuraCloud uh, in a web application uh, live right now on the web. So that's certainly something that you can do uh, is embed Dura, uh, uh, images that you have stored in DuraCloud in other web applications. Um, and you can do the same with video. I don't know if we have anybody in production using video streaming services at this point. Um, they were in production during the course of a pilot, um, but, that, um, but that pilot partner didn't keep those video streams uh, live um, at this point. I don't believe they're available on any public website. Um, but again, certainly both, uh, both use cases are um, options within DuraCloud, both image and video streaming. And um, in terms of current customers launching them live, I have just the one, the state of North Carolina, who's serving those index card images that I'm aware of. However, with that said, <laughs> I just found out about that uh, about that website just a, a week or so ago. So we could have DuraCloud customers doing great things, and I just haven't haven't uh, picked them up through my Google searches at this point. Um, but certainly, you can provide access to content that's stored in DuraCloud. Uh, not only preserve your content, prov but provide access to it at the same time. Any other questions that I can answer for folks? Again, doesn't necessarily have to be related to today's session or not. We are coming up. I think there's about five minutes left in today's session, so I will take a few more questions. Otherwise, um, I will end then. I don't see anybody typing. So again, uh, my last brown bag for 2012 will be on November 28th, so stay tuned for a topic, or if you have one to suggest, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, all of the information about these brown bag sessions is posted on the DuraCloud website, and a Dura, uh, recording of today's session will also be posted on the DuraCloud YouTube channel, which is also linked off of that DuraCloud brown bag series page on the DuraCloud website. So thank you all for your